In Max's OpenGL world, there are several ways to move shapes in space. Here is a simple jit.gl.grid shape. It's a plain torus with a jit.gl.material attached to make it look nice. We can send the position message to the shape and animate its motion with some simple Max objects. A much more sophisticated approach is to use a jit.anim.drive, which permits controlling complex motions with simple messages and paths. There is a third way to animate motion in OpenGL, one that gives shapes simulated physical bodies, which can then move in response to gravity, collisions, friction, and connections, just like the objects in the real physical world. So let's get moving. Here's a simple OpenGL patch with one grid shape. Let's connect a jit.fizz.body to the jit.gl.grid shape. This simulates a physical body and binds it to the grid shape. So far, nothing has changed. For the physics simulation to run, our bodies need a world. And the jit.fizz.world must be included in the same OpenGL context as the other OpenGL objects. Now watch what happens when I connect this fizz world to the GL render. The ball drops and stops. Now this illustrates two aspects of our world. First of all, there's gravity, like the gravity on the Earth's surface, pulling objects down with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. Indeed, that's the default value for the gravity attribute. Sending the reset message to our body places it back at position 000, and it falls again. By the way, a very convenient feature of our physical world is that we can turn gravity completely off. Now it just floats. Let's come back to Earth. When we reset, the other thing we see is that the ball stops dropping, as if it had landed on a very non-bouncy floor. This is the floor of the world box. We can reveal the world box by adding a jet.gl.fizzdraw to the patch. Note that all physics objects in the patch are automatically included in the jet.fizz.world. The world box constrains the motions of our bodies, making it easier to keep track of them. The size of the box is by default five meters in each direction. If we turn it off, things just fall into the infinite void. Turn it back on, the bodies come back. To make the box disappear, just disable jet.gl.fizzdraw. Typically, you'll want a fizzdraw in your patch to help you see what's going on as you work. You'll also want a jet.fizz.picker, which allows you to move objects with your cursor. So everything is looking quite natural, except for the fact that the object doesn't bounce on the floor. The world box constrains the object to remain inside the box, but it doesn't interact in a physical way. To create that effect, we need to actually make a body for our floor. The jit.fizz.body help file has this handy ground body we can copy and we can add a grid shape to see what's going on. Scaling the y value to zero means the cube becomes a flat plane. We can see this by moving the body up and down. Let's put the floor back at minus five and click reset. Now we see a little bounce. If we make our sphere more elastic by increasing the restitution attribute, we see it bounce more. If we delete the grid shape, we see that our floor still works, so invisible bodies can interact with other bodies. The position attribute means that it's positioned at the bottom of our world box. By the way, the world box's scale attribute modifies a default box whose dimensions extend in both positive and negative directions. Our world box is scaled at 555, so it has edges that are 10 meters long. Positioning our floor at minus 5 meters works out perfectly. It's also perfectly elastic, with its restitution of 1. That means no speed is lost in the bounce. Sometimes the analogy with the real world is not perfect. For example, the floor's mass attribute is set to 0. Now, it would seem that an object with 0 mass would require no force to move. 
However, in Max's physics world, zero mass has a special meaning. The object cannot be moved by any force. It stays put. It does, however, interact with other bodies, bouncing the ball back up, but not recoiling itself. When mass is not zero, it behaves as we would expect it. More massive objects are more difficult to move with forces. By the way, the default mass for a jet.fizz.body is one kilogram. Why kilogram? What if you prefer ounces? Unlike OpenGL objects, physics objects use parameters with default units of measurement. Mass is measured in kilograms, distance in meters, time in seconds. The physics algorithm is optimized for bodies whose size is between 0.05 units and 10 units, or 5 centimeters to 10 meters by default. If you need to work with sizes that are either very small or very large, you'll get more accurate results using a different unit. This is called scaling the world. For example, if you're working with a one centimeter object, you could decide that one unit of length is one centimeter. That's okay, but there's no global variable to set that scaling. Instead, you have to change a number of other default values to the new units. For example, if the length unit is one centimeter, then normal gravity should be set to minus 980 instead of minus 9.8 for the simulation to work properly. That's minus 980 centimeters per second per second. Now, since we're just getting started, let's keep things simple and use the default units. Now we've seen three important ways to move objects in our physical world. There's the world's gravity force, there's the position constraints of the world box, and there's bouncing from collisions with other bodies. In our next video, We'll look at these more closely.